Slave 1 is going to change everything about how the Mandalorian operates in the Star Wars galaxy. We'll cover that and more with full spoilers on today's Star Wars video. Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another video. Before we begin, I will be streaming Cyberpunk 2077, which releases in just a couple of hours over on my second channel, X2. If this does well, I'll probably play through the entire game on live streams, which is something that people have been pretty interested in. So if you'd like to come check it out, there'll be a link down in the description. We'll be starting probably at around 7.30 Eastern time. Anyway, we all know that the Razor Crest met a, well, fairly unfortunate fate for fans of the show in chapter 14 of the Mandalorian. So with no noble steed to slowly ride around the galaxy, looking a little frumpy, the Mandalorian has now turned to his new best friend, Boba Fett, who apparently will be providing some form of transport in Slave 1. Slave 1, of course, is a legendary ship in the Star Wars galaxy. I still remember fighting it in Shadows of the Empire. After fighting Boba Fett, it was very, very difficult. But I mean, the ship's got a lot of action in Star Wars canon and legends. In the movies itself, we see it featured prominently in episode 5 and even more so in episode 2 where it actually gets in a fight with Obi-Wan and his starfighter. And in Legends, Slave 1, like Boba Fett himself, has an even more storied history. Boba, as we mentioned in a prior episode, would run through a variety of ships, Slaves 2 through 4, and no, I'm not joking, but he would eventually always return to Slave 1, which would remain operational and a quite fearsome sight until the Star Wars Legacy era and presumably until his death. The Slave 1, although it has taken a couple of beatings in the past, particularly from Han Solo in Dark Empire, is not the rickety old vessel that the Razor Crest was. That makes a lot of difference not only in combat, but basically in every way. Let's talk about it. First of all, there's the obvious fact that flying around in Slave 1 presents differently than flying around in the Razor Crest. The Razor Crest had one sort of unique property, the fact that it was so old that it could sometimes slip past New Republic or Imperial Imperial officials because it came from an era before basic modern licensing standards for ships. Well, the Slave 1 is a much more prominent vessel in the galaxy. Of course, there are other fire sprays, but Slave 1 is probably the most famous ship of that type. And even if it's not Slave 1, fire sprays themselves sort of have a reputation for being associated with lawmen or on the black market as ships used by bounty hunters or other violent individuals. Admittedly, the Razor Crest was originally a gunship based on what we understand. However, it's so old that I don't think very many people would take it seriously as a threat, more likely belonging to somebody who doesn't have the credits to afford something better. I mean, in the very first episode, the myth role essentially calls it a piece of junk. So you go from a relatively innocuous ship to one associated with Boba Fett, and you're bound to draw more attention. But the Razor Crest also was associated with the Mandalorian himself, Din Djarin, who was wanted by the New Republic. So it's almost like an out of the frying pan into the fire type of situation, so we'll have to see how that plays out. That is admittedly a downside, but I'd say that the associated benefits of Slave 1 more than make up for that. Let's first talk about some of the soft features of the ship. Some of the less sexy ones, which aren't quite as flashy, but are very, very important when it comes to bounty hunting, or really just moving across the galaxy. First of all, in Legends, and presumably in canon, Slave 1 has had a fairly sophisticated stealth system. Now, of course, as an outright turn invisible, like we've seen some ships in Star Wars do, but it apparently can elude sensors fairly well. I mean, Boba Fett is very, very well known for following people to their destination and then sometimes beating them there, as we see in Episode 5 and multiple times in the Star Wars Legends EU. This stealth system could also explain why Slave 1 wasn't simply blasted to smithereens by Moff Gideon's light cruiser last episode. If he had some sort of anti-sensor system or a sensor jammer, then he could sneak up on it, get a good look, follow the enemy, which he talks about, see what's going on, then leave. And maybe this is what he did to the Millennium Falcon as well, some sort of sensor disruptor or whatever else. Either way, these features will likely still be a part of the Slave 1 and only a small part of its arsenal. You have to remember, this ship has been owned by at least two generations of bounty hunters in canon. Jango Fett and Boba Fett would have both made extensive modifications to the ship, much like Han Solo and the Millennium Falcon. So it only in appearances resembles the original fire 
sprites, now much more potent. As arguably the greatest bounty hunter in the galaxy, Boba most likely spent a lot of time and credits outfitting the ship with the best tracking technology. That'd be everything from biological scanners, communication devices, things to intercept transmissions, all technology which would allow him to operate stealthily and track down a target, which should be very useful in this case, where Grogu is missing. In Legends specifically, but probably in canon, Slave 1 was also known for having a very, very advanced security system, which, based on the Mandalorian, is something Din Djarin could have used on several occasions. But as I mentioned, those are the sort of soft factors that make Slave 1 much more effective as a transport ship across the galaxy. There's also the fact that the vessel is much, much more capable in a fight, maybe an order of magnitude more capable, even in its base form, than the Razor Crest. I mean, there has been a lot of situations where the Razor Crest is being chased by an X-Wing or two, and I think that a seismic charge would have made very, very easy work of that. The Razor Crest also doesn't seem to have a whole lot in the way of shielding or a very durable hull, which again is not the case for Slave 1, which is fast, destructive, and powerful. When it comes to weapons, again, as we see during the battle over Geonosis, many of Slave 1's armaments are hidden, but it has at least a set of quick-fire laser cannons. It has a homing proton torpedo launcher, which I think is game-changing in a battle. And if we use the full armament from the complete cross-sections book, Slave 1 has in total two twin rotating blaster cannons, two concussion missile tube launchers, an ion cannon, proton torpedo launchers, a tractor beam, a homing beacon launcher, and of course, the seismic charges. Realistically, that's not only enough firepower to face down a couple of starfighters, but even scare away some smaller transports or light cruisers. Another thing about Slave 1 is the fact that it's much more versatile when it comes to weapons, of course. The Razor Crest had two guns, and they were both pointed exactly forward, making it very vulnerable to more maneuverable fighters or even faster things like ties. The Slave 1 not only has those bombs which it can drop, but also rotating blaster cannons near the ship's nose, which gives it a lot more range of fire than the locked forward weapons of the Razor Crest. So with the Mando presumably traveling the galaxy in Slave 1, he has a more notorious ship, but also one that is much more capable. However, not only more capable in a fight, but just in the general duties of bounty hunting. I really would not be surprised if at some point Boba Fett just flips a switch and gets past a situation that the Mandalorian earlier in the season would have had to fight or run his way out of. I also wonder if Slave 1 will offer some replacement equipment for the Mandalorian. We know that he would have lost a lot, including his disruptor rifle, when the Razor Crest was destroyed, so hopefully he can get some replacements from maybe Boba Fett's old or unused weaponry. But guys, that's all for today. Until next time, have a good one, be safe, and may the Force be with you.